weeks, the red planet really does look brown in these pictures. Oh, hey everyone! Squeaks and I are learning about the planet Mars. Yes, it does have a lot of cool features, like the biggest volcano in the solar system and blue sunsets. I'd love to go see them. <laughs> Whoa, slow down, Squeaks. It sure would be exciting to send people to Mars, but it's not as simple as hopping aboard a rocket ship. Scientists and engineers have to plan everything out very, very carefully. For instance, you can't launch your spaceship whenever you want. I know. See, Mars and Earth are both orbiting or circling around the Sun. But Mars orbits farther away from our Sun than Earth does, and it moves more slowly. This means that they aren't always the same distance from each other. Sometimes they're super close to one another, and sometimes they're on opposite sides of the Sun. So you have to wait for the right time when the two planets are in the perfect spots so that a rocket can leave Earth, travel through space, and reach Mars all while everything is still moving. <laughs> yeah, you're right. It is complicated. But scientists can do the math to figure out exactly when it's okay to launch a rocket to Mars. These special times are called launch windows. And because Earth and Mars keep changing where they are, these launch windows only happen every 26 months or so. That's a little over two years. Oh, if a rocket misses its launch window, the team launching the rocket usually has to wait until the next one, and that can take a long time. Oh, that's a great question, Squeaks. You could launch at another time, but it would take a lot more fuel. That would make the rocket heavier and harder to launch. And getting to Mars takes a long time, too. A trip to Mars would probably take about seven to nine months. It's a long time, but the space between planets is really big. Yeah, I would want to go outside the spaceship and stretch at some point too, but it's not safe to do that. Once you're in space, it's a dangerous trip. Just like sailors on Earth have to deal with storms, astronauts traveling to Mars have to watch out for space weather. Yeah, space has weather too, but it isn't the same as our weather on Earth. Most space weather in our solar system comes from our sun. Every day, it spits out lots of teeny tiny particles that astronomers call the solar wind. And sometimes the sun does its own kind of burp, sending a giant burst of these particles out into space all at once. And that can create a kind of solar storm. So it can be dangerous for an astronaut to be hit by space weather because it can make them sick. Don't worry, Squeaks, buddy. We're safe from space weather down here on Earth because our planet can protect us. But ships that go into space need to be built with special materials that can protect the astronauts inside. Can you think of anything that humans use to protect themselves from tiny particles? Yes, that's really smart, Squeaks. You have to wear a lead apron when you get an x-ray at the dentist. Lead is really good at blocking harmful particles, like particles from the sun's solar wind, but it's also really heavy. When you're making a spaceship, you want to use materials that are as light as possible. Rockets can't be heavy, or they would need even more fuel to get off the ground. So we can't just wrap our spaceship in a big lead apron. The ship could have a small protection room inside that astronauts could stay in whenever the space weather got really bad. But they would need scientists back on Earth to predict when a big storm is coming and warn them ahead of time. Yeah, and after all that, there's still one more challenge to face landing the ship. Scientists and engineers have experimented with lots of different ways to land. When a ship arrives at Mars's atmosphere, or air, it will be going very fast. It'll be going so fast, the air can't move out of the way. The air gets smushed, and it gets really, really hot. Hot enough 
to melt metal. So to protect the landing spaceship, it needs to have a special layer called a heat shield. Falling through the air this way will slow it down a lot, but after the heat shield finishes its job, the ship needs to find another way to slow down. Luckily, we've safely landed a bunch of robots on Mars in the past and learned a lot from those missions. So engineers have used lots of ways to land their robots over the years. My favorite was giant bouncy airbags. Uh, you're right, <laughs> that might be a little too rough for human beings. So maybe we could use a combination of some other more gentle methods, like starting with a really big parachute and ending with small rockets that let part of the craft hover while a sky crane lowers the spacecraft to the ground. Yup, then we'll be on the ground and we can start exploring. Yeah, getting to Mars won't be easy, but we can learn so much from trying. Engineers and scientists are hard at work every day to find out the best way to get humans safely to Mars. There are a lot of challenges they'll have to solve, but it'll all be worth it when the first astronauts get to hop around on another planet. Hey everyone, Squeaks and I were using our telescope to look at the planet Mars. Okay Squeaks, what did you want to show me? Ooh, you're looking for a place to build a Mars fort? That's really cool. You know, scientists and engineers are preparing to send astronauts to Mars someday to visit or maybe even live there. We could all work together to learn more about our neighboring planet. It would be a big adventure, but there are some complicated problems that need to be solved before anyone can live on Mars. Hey, you love a science challenge, Squeaks. Do you want to think through some of these problems and see what ideas you can come up with to solve them? Great! The first big challenge of living on Mars is planning the important things you'll need to bring with you. Take a look at Mars. What do you think you'd need? Oh, you're right. A place to sleep is very important, and snacks are always a good idea. But even before that, we need to think about the very basics, like air to breathe and water to drink. Mars's atmosphere, or air, is different from Earth's. It's very, very thin, and there's almost no oxygen, which animals on Earth need to breathe including me. Astronauts would need to bring air with a healthy amount of oxygen or find a way to make it from the ingredients around them. There's a robot on Mars right now testing how to make oxygen from the air that's already there, kind of like plants do on Earth. However astronauts would get the air they need, they'd also have to find a way to keep it around them without it all floating away into space. Oh, spacesuits could help with that, and I love the idea of a giant bubble. So what about water to drink? Oh, a big water bottle is a good start. What do you remember about water on Mars, Squeaks? Yeah, there isn't much on the surface, and a lot of it is frozen. Scientists are trying to figure out which frozen bits of Mars are made of water and would be safe for us to drink. There may even be water deep underground, but we have to find it and test it before a thirsty astronaut takes a big long gulp. Let's look at another challenge. Gravity on Mars is a lot lower than here on Earth, so everything seems much lighter. I bet it would be fun to play in low gravity. We could jump really high. But low gravity also changes how people's bodies work. When astronauts spend a long time in low gravity, their muscles and bones grow weaker because their bodies don't have to work as hard to move around as they do here on Earth. But yeah, exercising can help. Astronauts need to exercise to help keep their bodies strong. Scientists are also researching to see if special medicines can help people stay healthy and strong on Mars. But in the meantime, I'll add some exercise equipment and a good routine to our packing list. How about one last challenge? Great. 
astronauts need to be able to talk to people on Earth. But Mars is super far away. The best and fastest way to send messages through outer space is by using radio waves. But it still takes time for these messages to travel between two planets. During some parts of the year, it would take over 40 minutes to get a response. But that's not all. The length of one day on Mars isn't the same as it is on Earth. So one day you might try calling a friend during both of your lunch times, but a couple weeks later, it would be in the middle of the night for them. You're right, a good schedule could help a lot. And if we thought about it more like sending letters instead of talking on the phone or computer, that might help us handle the long wait. <laughs> Oh, I miss you too, buddy. Let's agree that if we ever visit Mars, we'll do it together. Lots of amazing people all around the world are trying to solve problems like these so that humans can go to new amazing places like Mars. Working together, we might just find all the answers we need. Ooh, I think I'm getting it, Squeaks. Oh, hey there, Squeaks was teaching me how to use his new toy. It's been a lot of fun and a bit of a challenge. I have to steer the car using this remote control. Hey Squeaks, did you know that there are scientists who pilot remote control vehicles a little like this one as part of their jobs? It gets even better because some of these vehicles are far away in space, like the rovers exploring Mars. People can't go to Mars yet, but there are lots of questions we want to answer so that we can go there one day. To answer those questions, we send rovers to Mars instead of people. The rovers are a little bit like this remote control car, but much bigger and built to do science. Over the years, there have been six successful rovers there are five from the United States. Sojourner, Spirit and Opportunity, Curiosity, and Perseverance. And there's been one rover from China named Jurong. The rovers do things like take samples of Mars dirt and rock, make recordings of sounds, and take lots of pictures and video. They send tons of cool information back to Earth for scientists to study. Ooh, great question. Squeaks wants to know what kinds of questions the rovers are helping us answer. We have lots of questions about Mars. Right now, it's very cold and dry there, but many scientists believe a very long time ago, Mars was more like Earth. It might have been much warmer and had liquid water on its surface. Today, it only has water frozen into ice. And maybe it even had living things. Well, probably not people like you and me, but Mars could have had very teeny living things, like the bacteria we have on Earth that are too small for us to see without a microscope. So people called engineers designed the rovers to help us find answers to these questions. For example, the rover's spirit and opportunity helped us learn about what the water on Mars was like a long time ago. And the rover Perseverance is looking for evidence of tiny living things that might once have lived there. But to find the answers to those questions, engineers first had to solve many problems to get those rovers to Mars safely. Good question, Squeaks. For one thing, the rover has to land safely on Mars's surface. And when the rover is in space getting ready to land on Mars, it's moving really fast. So when the time is just right, a parachute opens to help slow it down. But it's not quite enough. The rover needs to land gently on the surface, or some of the tools on board would definitely break. Can you think of anything that might help keep the rover safe? What are some things that you do to keep safe as you're moving? <laughs> Ooh, I love it. Squeak says he wears things like a helmet and pads when he goes out rollerblading. If he falls, they help protect his body by acting like a cushion to keep him from getting hurt. The rovers don't wear helmets, but some of them, like Spirit and Opportunity, have used big fabric airbags to land. But these do work a little like helmets. They protect the rover and soften its landing so nothing on the rover breaks. So the rovers bounce down in a big balloon. That's a great solution to the problem of how to land safely on Mars. But 
it doesn't work every time. The Curiosity Rover was too heavy for an airbag to help it land safely. <laughs> oh, no need to worry, because there are multiple solutions to any problem. Engineers came up with a different way to protect Curiosity. After a parachute slowed the rover down, a flying platform gently lowered it to the ground. That system worked so well, they used it for perseverance too. So engineers came up with two different ways to solve the problem. I wonder if we could come up with different ways to solve another problem, Squeaks. Let's see. The rovers need a source of power to help them move, and so all of the scientific tools and computers will work. There's no way to just plug things in on Mars. So let's see if we can think of an idea for the rovers to get power. Hmm. Ooh, great idea, Squeaks. Squeaks says that he knows his remote control car uses batteries to move. So he thinks the rovers might use batteries too. And they do. They're not exactly like the ones we use in our homes and schools, though. Some of the rovers, like Spirit, Opportunity, and Jurong, use batteries. And better yet, these batteries use solar power. We have solar panels on the roof of the fort to help collect energy from the sun. And since the sun reaches Mars too, the rovers can use solar panels to collect energy. But Mars sometimes has huge dust storms. The clouds of dust keep the surface of the planet from getting light from the sun. So the batteries on Curiosity and Perseverance get their power from a special type of fuel instead. As this fuel breaks down, it powers the rover's batteries even if there's no sunlight. So once again, engineers found different ways to solve the problem of getting energy on Mars. And by solving all of these problems, we're able to send rovers to explore Mars and answer all of the questions we have about the red planet. <laughs> hey there, we were just playing with Squeaks' remote control car. Say, I noticed that your car has really big tires. I don't remember them being so big when we bought it. Aha, I'm glad you noticed. The car had a little trouble going over bumpy spots in the ground. So Squeaks and I thought about things we could do to fix that problem, and we worked together to find an answer. It took a couple of tries, but we found that the bigger tires help a lot. What a great solution. I had no idea that you and Squeaks were such great engineers. Oh, an engineer is someone who identifies problems and then designs ways to solve them. And that's exactly what you and Sam did. In fact, remember how we were talking about the Mars rovers? The remote control vehicles that we use to study Mars? Well, engineers once solved a problem really similar to yours. Engineers noticed that the wheels on the rover Curiosity were starting to wear out faster than they expected. That's because the surface of Mars is super rough and bumpy. So when they were designing the next Mars rover, Perseverance, they made some changes to the design and added new wheels that were bigger and thicker. And engineers are always thinking of ways to make their designs even better, especially for things like Mars rovers, since we still have lots of things we want to learn about Mars. We'd like to send even more rovers to help us study it. Let's be engineers today and design our own Mars rovers. Okay. Great. The first thing we need to do is to think about what things we want our rover to do. Let's each think of one thing. Hmm. Okay, let's share our ideas. Mars is super cold compared to Earth. So I think the rover should be able to keep itself warm so the tools on board don't freeze. Ah, oh, cool idea. What's your idea, Squeaks? Squeak says he thinks the rover should be able to drive really fast so it can cover a lot of area every day. Ooh, that's a good idea. How about your idea, Sam? I think the rover should be able to help figure out why the dirt on Mars is red. Ooh, I like that idea too. Let's use that as our problem. How can the rover help scientists figure out why the dirt is red? Okay, it's time to use our imaginations. Let's split up and each come up with a design to solve this problem. Grab a pencil and paper and I'll meet you back here in a little while. Sounds good. All right, now for my favorite part, sharing ideas. Sam, why don't you go first? 
I think we can find out why the dirt is red by looking at it more closely. So my rover has tools on board like magnifying glasses and microscopes that can help us see things better. I love this design. How about you, Squeaks? Oh, Squeak says the rover should be able to taste the dirt. Maybe it has a flavor that makes it red. So he's included a tool that acts like a robotic tongue. That's awesome. How about your design, Jesse? Oh, well, I think that the rover should be able to bring back some dirt to Earth so scientists can study it up close. So my rover has a scoop that it can use to dig up some dirt. Whoa, that's a great idea, Jesse. Thank you. Wow, we came up with three different ways to solve the problem. That's exactly what engineers do. If we were really going to try out any of these ideas to send them to Mars, our next step would be to build a model. Engineers and scientists use models to see how well their solutions work. So for example, we might build a model rover with a robotic tongue like yours, Squeaks. Then we would try it out somewhere on Earth that's a little like Mars, like the desert. If if that worked well for helping us learn about the dirt on Earth, it would probably work well on Mars too. So we'd add it to our design. You can think like an engineer too. All you need to do is to come up with a problem to solve. Then imagine a way to solve it and draw out your design. Have more than one idea? Then you can make more than one design. Ooh, I think I have another idea. Awesome, let's go and make some more designs. Thanks to our partner, the Museum of Science, for collaborating with us on this episode of SciShow Kids. You may not be able to visit Mars just yet, but you can jet over to the Museum of Science YouTube channel to learn more about everything from the outer reaches of space to the inner workings of life science. And we'll see you next time.